Hello and welcome once again to a New Beginning in Christ Ministries. I hope you've tuned in today to be blessed. Praise God. And we're just we're going to be talking today about a, a subject that's uh, it's kind of funny because when you actually preach uh, about it in some churches, people get up and walk out. You know, it's the <laughs> least uh, welcomed or open subject that we have ever approached in the ministry, and I it really is. Praise God. Shame. Yeah. Shame. <laughs> right. Well, that's what I have to say, and, and we're going to look at it, praise God, from then. Now, I'm not even going to say what it is, because some of you will turn the TV off and walk away, turn over to one of those TV evangelists, praise oh, God. Oh, I want to say one thing, though, before we go. You didn't know I was going to do this. I want to wish you happy Veterans Day. Oh, you thank served you. our, our country God. for 35 years, and I want to say thank you. Thank uh, you. That's today we're filming this coming up Sunday's uh, show, and I just wanted to, to thank you. From Praise the bottom the of my heart. Yeah. Well, actually, it will have passed when this show airs. But that's, I know, that's and okay. And I want to thank all of our veterans out there. Yes. Praise God, because uh, nobody knows the sacrifice that veterans have to put in. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Uh, not only do they sacrifice time away from their loved ones, but they sacrifice their lives and limb uh, to keep liberty in this country. And, you know, uh, uh, praise God. Don't, I'm not bitter, folks. But people who have never sacrificed anything for this country, uh, they have no sense of value for this country. They just live from day to day, hoping that the welfare check gets in on time and complain because they don't have an 80-inch uh, high-definition plasma television. But I'm talking right now, praise God for the veterans Thank whose you. blood has kept this country free who have paid a high cost so that other people can sit back and do nothing. But that's what a veteran does. And let me just also say this. The only other person that shed his blood for you and for this country was Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So you've got two people to thank today if you're still speaking English. Praise God. And that is Jesus Christ and a veteran. I'll so go even praise further. God. If you can speak English and go to heaven. That's who you got Amen. to Amen. Praise God. Now, you had some folks you wanted to say hello to before I, sure I make everybody mad. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We want to say good morning to Pastor Dow at New Horizon Church in Mountain Home and Pastor Lamb. We love y'all this morning. We also want to say to our friends in Tiptonville, Tennessee, the Blurtons, good morning to you and Pastor Mary Ledford at Booger Holler. I just want to say hi to the pastors today because... Uh, this is a subject that I think that I'm going to make copies of and send to them Amen. to watch. And, well, and Brother Ken Crow over at uh, Church at the Well. Out here, here in Harrison, Harrison Arkansas. Arkansas. Praise Good God. morning. Amen. So uh, mm -hmm. just well to all the pastors out there. Yeah. And let me say this, and I appreciate every pastor uh, who stays with this congregation mm -hmm. and, and has to work with limited income, has to work with limited supplies, praise God. And still do the best job that they can do. Praise God for the people. And, but let me just say this, folks. It is not the government's responsibility to take care of the people. That responsibility falls on the church. The church and family. And family. Praise God. And if instead of paying 27 to 35% of your income to the government so that they can divvy it up and the way fund they abortions want and do all this other stuff uh -huh. just pay your 10 percent to the church and let god bless that giving uh, so that people in the church in your local church can be blessed praise god when our sister carolyn's coming up to sing mm. and uh you've got some really good songs this good morning. i praise hope god. so praise <laughs> lord so uh we're gonna t tune over there and uh praise god Listen to Sister Carolyn as she sings to us, and then we're going to get right back with you. Praise God. Bless God you. In Jesus' name. All right. I just want to, this next song I'm going to do is called Another Valley Left Behind. And I really like the words to this because when it says another valley left behind, that's another test. That's another trial. That's something that you've got to get over. You've got to go through. And, and that's what I like about this song because... You may not understand it. You may not know where it's coming from and how long it's going to last, how hard it's going to be. And, that, and just listen to the words, let them bless you, because you know that God's going to be with you through the whole thing, and you will make it 
if you just fight the good fight. And it's called Another Valley Left Behind. I've never walked this road before If one more step or many miles I'll just have to trust you, Lord For there is nothing left behind me That I could ever go back It's my desire to make this journey By your grace I'll make it through Through the storms and through the trials Across the desert burning and sand You have said that you'd go with me And give me strength Much weeping in the darkness When the morning sun does shine I'll have the time of joy and gladness Another valley left behind I can't see a silver lining Behind the dark cloud hanging on And I can't seem to find the answers To my questions anymore You never promised me exemption From the testing times of life but I sure need some light for traveling Cause Lord it sure looks dark tonight Through the storms and through the trials Across the desert burning sand You have said that you'd go with me And give me strength You know, I, I really hope you enjoy the, the songs that I sing. I don't sing them because I'm such a great singer. I know better than that. But I sing them because I love the Lord. And they got a message in them. Someone once told me something. When I, I got to a point where I thought, well, you know, it's just no point in me singing. There's so many people out there that sing so much better, seem more anointed, you know. But what it is, it's, it's a message in a song. Now, when I looked at it like that, it's serious. And I hope that you can relate to some of these songs. If you really listen to the words, I think you will. The next one is called, You Gave Me Love. Now, this song right here, and I don't know if you've ever been in that place in your life where it just seems like you were all alone. Nobody really listened to you. Nobody really talked to you. And nobody really was there when you needed them. Like in the quiet time of night when there's nobody around, you know there's people but you don't feel f quite that free to call them. You don't want to wake them up or disturb them. With Jesus, it's never that way. He's right there. All you got to do is just whisper his name. 
So if you can uh, listen to this song, I think you'll know what I'm talking about. It's called You Gave Me Love. You gave me time when no one gave me time of day. You look deep inside while the rest of the world looked away you smiled at me when there were just frowns everywhere you gave me love when nobody gave me a prayer that's why Now, this song is an old song, and quite frankly, I kind of like the old songs. They've stood the test of time, you might say, and that's what this song is about, standing through the test, and it's called, it's called Come Morning for a reason because sometimes the nights, I don't know about you, but sometimes they're a little longer than the daytime. And that's when you really think about some stuff, when you start to lay down. And I often think, when I lay down to go to sleep, and I become unconscious in my sleep, that's probably the closest to a natural death as we'll face while we're still alive. Does that make any sense at all? Just kind of think about that. And while I'm singing this song, see if you can understand what, what the meaning is. I wished I knew the person who wrote this song, because I could tell they've been through some stuff. Praise God. Amen. God's children too long have been burdened. They're long. Or heaven's green shade. 
oars Where heartaches are left far behind them And burdens are carried no Evergreen tree, I'll carry my cross through the midnight. Come morning, there's glory for me. Sometimes I'm despised. And rejected, and I question, Oh Father, how long? Then I take one more look at Mount Calvary, and it gives me the strength to go on. Morning, I walk by the river. I'll rest near the evergreen tree. I'll carry my cross through the midnight. Come morning. There's glory for me. The morning I walk by the river, I'll rest beneath the evergreen tree. I'll carry. the midnight come morning there's glory for me come morning there's glory for me hang in there Now, this song right here, it's a very special song, and, you know, if you, you have friends and family in your life, and it's not so hard losing them if you know they're saved, and that, that you're going to be friends and family forever in heaven. And it's going to be a little different. Yes, it's going to be much better than it could ever be down here. And the love's going to be much greater. So, as I sing this song, it's called Friends, and I don't know much about this song. I don't know how old it is, but it's very dear to me, and I love it, so I just hope you enjoy it. Friends. Packing up the dreams God's planted in the fertile joy of you. Can't believe the hopes He's granted means a chapter in your life is through. But we'll keep you close as always. It won't even seem you gone. Cause our hearts in big 
had small ways We'll keep the love that keeps us strong And friends are friends forever If the Lord's the Lord of them And a friend will not say never Cause the welcome will not end Though it's hard to let you go to the Father's hands we know That a lifetime's not too long To live as friends With the faith and love God's given Springing from the hope we know that you show cause we'll keep you close as always it won't even stay gone cause our hearts in big and small ways will keep the love that keeps a strong and friends are friends forever if the Lord's the Lord of them and a friend will not say never cause the welcome will not end though it's hard to let you go to the Father's hands we know that a lifetime's not as friends and friends are friends forever if the Lord's the Lord of them and a friend will not say never cause the welcome will not end though it's hard to let you go to the Father's hands we know that a lifetime is not too long to live as friends, no lifetime's not too long to live as friends. Just remember, if the Jesus is your Lord, you'll always be friends. I'll never forget the first time I heard this song. It was in uh, Manila, Arkansas. I was at a church. And I, it was one of the prettiest songs I'd ever heard. I don't, I don't know how old it is. called The Anchor Holds. But there's such a message in it. You know, you can go through some stuff and you're going to. You know, this seems to be a day when we're going to be singing songs about going through stuff. Because isn't it what we do in everyday life? Isn't it what life? You never know what you're going to face, how long it's going to last, or which direction it will go. Unless you got Jesus, and that's where it counts. Because he's your anchor. He's the only thing in this life, and I mean the only thing that you can truly hang on to that can get you through everything. So listen to this song, and I hope it blesses you. It's called The Anchor Holds. <laughs> I have journeyed Through the long, dark night Out on the open sea By faith Unknown. And 
yet his eyes were watching me. And the anchor holds, though the ship is battered. The anchor holds, though the sails are torn. I have fallen on my knees as I faced the rain. But the anchor holds in spite of the storm. Now I've had visions, and I've had dreams. I've even held them in my hand, but I never knew they could slip right through like they were only grain of sand But the anchor holds Though the ship is battered The anchor holds Though the sails are torn Yes, I have fallen on my knees as I faced the raging sea, but the anchor holds in spite of the storm. I Proved his love for me. An anchor holds. Though this ship, it's battered. The anchor, he holds. Though these old sails, they're torn. Yes, I have fallen on my knees as I faced the raging sea and the anchor holds despite the storm. Yes, I have And the anchor holds in spite of the storm. Thank you, Jesus. Well, welcome back. Praise God. I'm telling you what, Sister Carolyn, you just sing 
so beautifully. Thank you. I have my good days and my bad days, but you know, in all of it, I have the Lord. Well, and, and the thing about it is when you have the Lord, folks, there's a song in your heart all the time. Praise God. I mean, even when you're going through some things, and, and before we get into our study today, uh, you've had some things going on in your heart here lately with your family. Praise yeah, God. Uh, okay. my sister Arlene, I would like to ask everyone to please pray for her. She's having some hard times right now. I have a lot of, of loved ones who need to know the Lord. And I just, you know, I'm like everybody else. Uh, we have our mountains to climb, our valleys to go through. But you know what? We can do it. He promised us all these good things in his word that if we would trust him and pray for them, that they will be saved. We not, may not live to see it, Brother James. We may not live to see when um, our families come in, but they will because you know why? We have the faith, and we pray with earnest expectation, and we believe. Amen. You know, and the Bible tells us if you can just believe. If you can just see, God's promises are yes and amen. God is not man that he could lie. Uh, God doesn't lie. His promises, the Bible tells us very clearly that God watches over his word to perform it. Amen. And when God has said something, folks, it has to come to pass. Now, when God has made a promise to us that when we pray, when we turn to him, when we live close to him, praise God, then good things begin to happen in our life, praise God. And the wonderful thing about that is that when we stand on that word and receive it and walk in it, then we have a full right as children of the Most High God to have expectation, earnest expectation of those things which we have asked shall come to pass. And I'm just agreeing with you today for the health of your family, for your sister especially, praise God. Uh, and we need your prayers, folks, to join with us, to reach out and touch them, because prayer changes things. And I know that. I don't have to think about it or Amen. wonder. I know that prayer... Prayer doesn't change God. No. But prayer changes circumstances and around situations. you and around your family and around your situation. Absolutely. God. And so it's we need to move closer to the Lord, folks. Uh, this country has moved away from God. And, of course, in the end times, it tells us that the apostasy is going to take place, that people are going to move away from God, and they'll try to buy their way in uh, and work their way into heaven. And it's just simply not going to work, praise God. But... And this is getting into our subject. We have a responsibility before God to take care of the house of God, the temple of God, if you will. First of all, our body, which is the temple, but the house of God, and that is the place where you gather together to worship Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I hear people say, well, I can worship at home. I can worship at the lake. I can worship while I'm hunting. And you should. And, and you can. And you but... Scripture tells us not to avoid coming to church. Do and not forsake the gathering of the saints. That's right. And we're to come together, folks, and rejoice with one another. Why? Because maybe you're up all the time, but what about your brother? What about your sister? What about the poor? What about the weak uh, that are in your church family mm -hmm that need your testimony, that need your uplifting, that need your encouragement. And your right prayers there. and your support. Yes. And that's why we come together to, to help not just them, but to help the church. Now, I'm going to make a statement, and I'm sure some of you will be offended by it, and that's okay. <laughs> Praise God. If you're not supporting your church with your tithes and your offerings, if you are not going to church and professing to be a Christian, then this I would say to you, I doubt your Christianity. Because if you are a true Christian, then love and compassion and giving and all of those things should be flowing through you. You should be actually looking for opportunity to be a blessing. You should be full of compassion, praise God, and knowing that when Jesus said, 
when you do these things to the least of these, your brethren, you do them unto me. Now, let me ask you this. Would you withhold everything from Jesus? If, you, if Jesus was standing here right now, would you withhold from him your tithes and your offerings? And then look at Jesus and say, uh, Lord, I need you to heal me. I need you to bless me, but I'm not willing to give to you. Come on, folks. Praise the Lord. We need to understand that when we are true believing Christians, we seek opportunity to be a blessing to those around us. Hallelujah. Sister Carolyn, I know that we've talked about this already. And we need to understand. If in church, we need to understand. And I'm talking to the church family out there. The needs of your church, your church, that place where in your community where you go and where you support the minister, where you support things that are going on, though that pla that's the place where you are supposed to go. How in the world can you possibly stand and tell me that you believe that if I'm not going to go to church, I'm not going to support my church, I'm not going to give in tithes and offerings, and then sit down and send money to some TV evangelist who has million-dollar homes, multi-million-dollar homes, airplanes flying all over the country and everything, and people in your own community, even maybe just down the street from you, are going hungry. Do you think for one absolute second that that evangelist knows them or even cares? Now, I know I'm probably offending some of you, but the Bible clearly says that you are to give where you live. God set aside places of worship in the nation of Israel. They were divided up among the nations of Israel, and each place had priests, each place had temples where people were to come and bring their offerings. They were come to bring the tithe. They, were, they brought their grain. They brought the wine. They brought whatever was necessary so that the priest could do their job. Are you understanding me? For when you fail to support your local church, you're failing your community. Wow, I know I'm in trouble now. Praise God. But that's the truth. We're not to give... People in Arkansas don't give to somebody in Washington, D.C. I mean, let's face it, folks. Washington, D.C. has already taken half of what you make now in Social Security benefits and income tax. In every, they have more taxes than you can possibly shake a stick at. Why? Because they say we need to take care of the people. And they squander your money. They rob everything that comes down. Everybody has to get a piece of the pie until it comes down to the person who actually needs it. Then that person has only one cent on the dollar, if that, to get by with. I'm sitting here just waiting here because we got worked up before the show. We Amen. was talking about this. <laughs> I challenge the people who, uh, it, okay, like you said, in your community, um, if you give money to a big time evangelist, I'm not I'm not knocking them one-on-one. Um, -on -one. I'm saying the majority of them have their own private jets. Now, come on, who needs their own private jet? Do you know what it costs just to fuel that each time they want to go somewhere? How many tithes and offerings have widows, children who do not have food, have suffered and done without so that they can have that private jet? Get a plane, dude. Get a ticket like everybody else. Rent a car when you get there if you have to. That's the Lord's work. The other is just, that's, that's flesh. Well, what's amazing to me is when your pastor in your local church, in your hometown, doesn't have enough money to buy gasoline to put in his car to visit the sick. 
because mm. money is being sent to evangelists who don't know you and who squander that money. Hey, call that evangelist and see if he'll go visit that sick yeah, person. Come see him. you in the hospital, do yeah. your funeral, do your wedding, pay, pray for your job. Let me also say this. They say, send us money and we'll pray for you. You cannot buy a blessing. You can't buy a blessing from God. And their prayer is no stronger than your prayer if you're a believer. I know I'm offending some of you folks, but I want you to get down and start searching. Is your, does your local church have everything that it needs? Where's the food pantries? Yeah. Churches used to have food pantries. Now, where did that food come from and the people to help run them? You know, people quit volunteering anymore. They, they're getting cold. They don't want to volunteer. They don't want to give. They don't want to do anything. They just want to come there and be entertained. That's right. That the church has turned into a giant Branson theater. And it's sad. And with the uh, uh, folks, we see strobe lights. We see the smoke, the smoke coming up, and we see all this mm -mm. stuff going on. That's not of God. No. That's not of God. That's just entertainment. People go to church now to be entertained. And then when they need something, then they run back to the pastor for prayer and, and to have that need fulfilled there. And the pastor and the church is simply not able to because they don't have the finances and the people to support it. Why? Because that's all gone off somewhere else. Mm, mm. Praise God. We got some scripture to Shame back this up. Shame on you. Praise the Lord. If you're not giving in your local church, if you're withholding from God, let me be very clear. God will withhold from you. Listen to what it says mm -hmm. in Malachi. I hope you turn with me over there. Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Praise God. Let me begin at verse 7. It says, Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from mine ordinances. In other words, you don't keep up with what I said for you to do. And have not kept them. Return unto me. Let's get closer to God, folks. Praise God. And I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you say, Wherein shall we return? And listen to what God says. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Now, what is God saying here? He's saying this. When you fail to trust me, when you go your own way, when you no longer care about what's going on in your area, in your local community, in your church, when you refuse to pay your tithes to that place where I have put it in your heart to be a member and a part, then you are withholding back the ability for that church to function in the community as it is supposed to function. It is the church's responsibility to meet the needs of the poor and the needy. It is the church's responsibility to take care of the widows and the orphans. It is not the government's responsibility. But when you withhold those tithes and offerings from your local church, you rob God of the blessing that he is supposed to get. Because you do it on an individual basis where people see and know what's going on. Do you think for an absolute minute that some evangelist uh, making millions and millions and millions of dollars every year even knows your name or cares about you? Not like, think about how your pastor has to go through. Think about what other people in your church who are true Christians are going through, praise God. And they're doing everything that they can and yet people just stand by and they won't even come to church unless they're absolutely dying. Now, bro now Brother James, I, um, I love the small church. Uh, we, we really do. You and I enjoy going to small churches. Number one, the pastor, the church when it's a smaller church, and I'm saying 100 or under, yeah. they, they know the names of their sheep, they know their problems, they see the needs of the church, and they really do work harder than any other uh, pastor that, you know, because right, the other bigger right. churches has so many people helping them do everything. They don't have to worry about cleaning the church or nothing. Listen to what God says about this. There's a price to pay okay. for withholding from God. Okay. Hallelujah. Listen to what he says. 
Will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me? But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Listen to what it says in mm. verse 9. Yeah. You are cursed with a curse. Oh, my. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Oh, that's God talking. Now listen, folks. When you... <laughs> When you withhold from God, when you withhold from God's church, you're cursed. How, how can you possibly expect to be blessed? <laughs> Praise the Lord. When uh, you take, listen, I, and I'm just so sincere about this, folks, because I know in my heart that when you trust God, and some of the only ways that you can trust God and see the results immediately is, first of all, when you become a true Christian person. And when you become a true Christian person, there should be a desire to give unto the Lord. Now, we sometimes start preach tithes and offerings in church. We have people get up and walk out because they don't want to hear it. Why? Because their heart's black. Because they don't care about any of they just All they want to know is uh, where's my next meal coming from. But they're not willing to stop robbing God. Even if, it, if you have nothing at all. If when you begin to give, God will begin to give to you. Amen. When you withhold that which you have that belongs to God. Listen to me. It belong, it's only loaned to you for, for a while, praise God. But the more that you give back to God, the more that you have. When you give to the poor, the Bible says that you loan unto the Lord. Wow. That means that God has a responsibility to pay you back. Wow. And God never just pays back one-on-one. -on -one. It's tenfold, twentyfold, a hundredfold. Praise God. We don't God. just match what you do. So what am I? What are we saying? We're saying that when you withhold in your tithes and your offering from your local church, you are being cursed of the Lord. Don't think for a second that God's going to bless what you're doing. And I also know that uh, a lot of people who. Well, I make a big offer, and every time the uh, evangelist is in, or that guy on TV comes on, the big evangelist on TV, I, I make an offering to him. So, therefore, I, I'm out of it. If, you don't, if you're not faithful in your tithes, you can't even make an offering. Not even that's, that's honored. That's true. And let me say this also. If you want to make an offering unto these big evangelists, that's fine. That's fine. If the needs of your local church are already being met. Yes. Are you hearing me? If the need of your local church is going unfilled and you're giving to somebody way off over here that has no idea who you are or anything about them, the Bible says you are being cursed. Oh, they'll use it to buy gas for their planes and build another big home, praise God. Well, they'll be safe and stored up for the hard times, Yeah. but you're out there. Praise God. Listen to what it says. Mm. Here's the instruction from God. Verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. What house? The church. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Mm. Now, hold your place there, and let's go over, praise the Lord, to Nehemiah. Praise God, we're running out of time. And Nehemiah has come back to uh, Jerusalem to rebuild the walls of the city. And he has come to clean it up, and, but there's funds that need to be taken care of. Praise God. It takes money to do the Lord's work. And I perceive verse 10. This is Nehemiah chapter 13. And it begins in verse 10 and down through 12. 
And I perceived that the portion of the Levites had not been given them. In other words, there was no money for the priest. Let's put it in today's terms. There's not enough money there for the pastors and the ministers in your local church to do what God has called them to do. For the Levites and the singers that did the work, were fled every one to his field. What does that mean? It means that they had to cease from working in the church to go out and try to find enough to just get by. I see this so often. Praise God. And it, it's, what does that mean that we're supposed to be full-time preachers? No, it means that if you have to, if the tithes and offerings are not coming in and you have to go out and work, you work what's necessary in a field that God has given unto you, praise God, so that there can be some food in the house. Praise the Lord. Now listen to what he goes on to say. Then contended I with the rulers. With the who? Oh, gee. Then contended I with the government. Hmm. Which government? The United States government in our case. And I asked them, why is the house of God forsaken? Why is the house of God forsaken? forsaken. And I gathered them in together and set them in their place. Who's he talking about? He's talking about the priest. He's talking about the true believing Christians that are not in the house of God because the house of God is not being kept up. Mm. Then brought all Judah the tithe of the corn and the new wine and the oil and the treasuries. Praise God. And so when Nehemiah began to bring the nation of Israel, praise God, to where they were supposed to be, and they began to bring everything back into the temple. There was sufficient food and to meet the need of the people there in that local area. Praise God. Listen to what he says. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. Where's the storehouse? It's your local church that there may be meat in mine house, God's house. Praise God. And prove me now. Listen to what God is saying. When you refuse to meet the need that's there, God said, then you're cursed with a curse mm. because you have robbed him from being God to those people who are in need. When you say to somebody, well, be blessed and they have a need, and you withhold from that need, the Bible asks you, where's your compassion? You, you, if you're a true Christian, you have compassion for the lost, for the hungry, for the sick. Praise God. When I go out and take care of somebody's need, mm -hmm. they say thank you. And they see me as the provider. That is not God's intent. God intends for me to give my tithes and my offerings into the local church so that the local church can dish this out to those in need and then the church is seen as the place of prosperity. The church is where they will go to have their needs met. The church is where they will go for prayer for the sick. When the church is meeting the need, the people will come to the church to have their needs met. And the church, because the people now are putting their tithes and offerings into the storehouse, will be able to meet the need of the people. When people are coming into the church with needs and they're being met through God, praise God, miracles begin to happen. Church growth begins to take place. People who have walked away, the singers and, and, and the people, uh, praise God, and the musicians now come back. And God is blessed in that. See how you rob God when you refuse to tithe and make your offerings? I hope you're listening to me out there, praise God. Hallelujah. And some, I know some of you are angry. Some of you have already turned us off. But I'm telling you right now, as sure as we're sitting here, you withhold from God 
in doing it God's way. And God will withhold from you. And God's way, just as we read in Nehemiah, is so that the church in your local area, the temple in your local area, can prosper enough to meet the needs of the people that are there locally. I knew you started to say You know, say Brother James, I don't, I know, I, I just, um, I don't mean to judge, and I'm not judging, I'm just saying what I see and what I know in my heart. Praise God. And too many times we go to, ch being evangelists, we see, go to all these churches. We make offerings into that church when we go. Yes, we do. We actually tithe back into that church when yes, we, we go. Do. But uh, too many times people come up wanting prayer for this. Oh, we're having trouble financial. Anytime somebody comes up and says, well, I'm having financial troubles, I can do two things. I know immediately they're not tithing, but I can choose to ask them to their face, are you tithing faithfully? And I guarantee Amen. you, 100% almost. That's right. They'll say, no, I hadn't been paying my tithes. I said, you don't wait and pay tithes when you can afford them. You pay tithes so that you can af that you're, will increase your, your, your money. Amen. You tithe. See, people, you have to understand that money is seed. Mm -hmm. It's just like corn. It's like beans. Mm -hmm. It's like watermelon. Praise God. But unless it is put into fertile ground, it will bear no good increase. And your church is fertile ground. Your church, be sure, first of all, that it's you're going church. to a church that is fertile ground. Mm. Now, there are a lot of churches that preach Jesus Christ and the gospel, but they turn away from the things of God. And I've heard a lot of pastors say that I refuse to preach about tithes and offering because it offends my congregation. Well, what's wrong with your congregation? They need. Let me mm -hmm. just put it this way. Your congregation needs to get saved, truly saved. If they're saved, they will pay their tithes. You don't have to beg them. That's right. They're, they're, when you announce that tithes and offerings are to be taken or received, Woo. praise God, there should be a joy in the church. There should be a... Uh, an uh, applause and singing, mm -hmm. praise God, for an opportunity to yes. give so that they can be blessed. True Christians understand that principle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've seen Christians that have literally had nothing but every need was met through Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So oh. when you come up to us and ask uh, for prayer because you're broke and you need some money, the we're first gonna thing we're going to ask you is what, Carolyn? Are you faithful in your tithes? Are you paying See? it to your local church? Faithfully. Yeah, because if you're sinning by not giving according to, the, the, to your ability, if you're down to your last dollar, then you, you owe 10, 10 cents ten of cents it to the Lord. 10 cents goes to the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And you're not giving to that church. You're giving unto the Lord. That's right. You're giving the unto Lord. the Lord so that the Lord can do what he wants but to do. But you have to be a good steward of your money. You have to make yeah. sure that the church you're going to is a true church of God. There is, there's always, always choices that you have to make and you have to discern. That's right. Praise We're about God. out of time, brother. Folks, well, and once again, folks. Find a local church. Don't walk in the curses of God. Walk in the blessings. Do according to God's will. Praise God. Has this been a hard message today? Yes, it is. It's tough. But will a man rob God? Mm. How do I rob God? I rob him of the blessings that he would have given but he would have received if we had given unto him according to his will. Praise Amen. God. Folks, find a good church and support it. I hope you still According likes. to the will of God. <laughs> if Praise you God. don't, with yeah. blood's off our hands anyway. This we is love a message you. Praise God, God, God had for us. And we'll see you again next week. Praise God. Until then, you just remember, you shall know the truth. And the, and truth, the truth will, will set, set you free. free. Praise God. See you next week. God, God bless. bless. That's it.